This is the biggest reason why you're not showing up higher on Google. You can do all the keyword research in the world. You can write the best blog posts anybody's ever written. But if you're not doing this, you're setting yourself up for failure. If you want to show up higher on Google, you're going to need to keep track of what you're optimizing. And no, I don't mean complicated Excel sheets where you need to go in and update a bunch of stuff every single week. I mean an automated report that will show you really quickly if your rankings are going up or if they're going down. Side note, if you're serious about SEO and you want to rank higher on Google, hit that subscribe button. I post new tutorials every single Monday. All right, let's get back to it. Before I show you how to set up this report, you're going to need to understand why we want to keep track of all this stuff. Someone once said, what gets measured gets optimized, or was it managed? We're gonna go with optimize for the sake of this tutorial. So what gets measured gets optimized. Now you may have had some luck by just shooting in the dark and ranking high on Google, but that's not always going to be the case. We need to measure what we're doing so that we're not just shooting in the dark. We know where the target is and we know what we're gonna hit. Basically measuring turns the lights on and lets you see the target. Again, we don't wanna overcomplicate things too much. It can lead to what we call paralysis by analysis, where basically you have so much data that you take no action because you're overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information that you have. <laughs> and I want you to avoid that. I actually want you to succeed. So we're only gonna be taking a look at four metrics, but you really only need two of them. All right, so we're about to get into the report here and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do everything step by step. So make sure that you're watching and make sure that you subscribe. You're gonna need two things to follow along, a Google Search Console account and a Looker Studio account. You're using the same email address to sign up for both of these. So if you already have a Google Search Console account, fantastic. If you don't, go back and watch my previous videos and I show you how to set all that stuff up. Oh, and you can make a copy of the report that I'm about to show you. Okay, so first we're gonna take a look at one of our client reports. Don't worry, we have permission to share this. And basically I'm gonna take you through how to create this yourself. So you can see here on the left-hand panel that we have all of these different tabs. Each one of these is a different page, a different part of the report. Your report's not necessarily gonna be this long. Uh, it gets longer as we go, cause this is a live report. This is an active report. So the first thing we have a cover page, you know, it just says who the client is and there's some kind of picture. Uh, and then we have activity reports. So here's everything that happened during this month. Uh, we typically save this as a PDF so the client can go back and look at this. So we can see here we have, you know, we did a competitive analysis, we did keyword research, we published two blog posts, we optimized five pages, and so on. Uh, blog posts here, the blog posts that we published, the backlinks, I took those off of here, but this is where we would typically include the links to the backlinks. And then these are the pages that were optimized. You don't necessarily need to do this if you're doing it for yourself. Uh, because you're going to know, you know, all of this information anyways. Um, but it's just, it's good to have this here for clients and especially in our case, because then they can see at a quick glance exactly all the work that was done and they have links to all of it. And next we have high level SEO metrics. This just basically shows, you know, how many impressions, clicks, click through rate and average position that the site got. What are the top pages? What are the top queries here? You know, was it mostly on mobile, desktop, tablet? And in this case, it's mostly mobile. And uh, we just see impression trends and click trends here. This is a slide that I like the best because it really shows you the growth that you're having. If you are having growth or if there's any kind of issues, this usually goes year over year. So you can see how you're performing in this example last December versus this December. Since they just signed up in May 2023 for Google Search Console and that's when they started their site, we don't have any data going back farther than that. And that's probably going to be the case with you as well, unless you've signed up over a year ago. Uh, you're likely not going to have this information. So we just see here the trend of clicks going up and we can see here the trend of impressions going up as well. And if you don't know what an impression is, it's basically anytime somebody does a Google search, if your website comes up in the search results, even if somebody doesn't click on it, that's considered an impression. Uh, and typically your impressions will increase uh, as you're optimizing your website as well. And that should reflect the amount of clicks you're getting. As you can see here, the graphs pretty much match uh, in terms of the growth month over month. Uh, that this client is getting. So keyword one here, we basically want to see any keywords that we're ranking for that include the word sauna because that's one of the products that they sell. So we could see all of these keywords here. We see that clicks are up there, impressions are up, click through rates up, and average position is also up. Keyword two, they also sell cold tubs. So here we can see, you know, clicks are way up for any keyword that includes the word cold. So cold plunge, cold tub, anything like that. Uh, impressions are also up, click-through rate and average position are also up. This is where it kind of gets interesting. We have June blog tracking. So this is where we're tracking any of the blog posts that we wrote in June 2023, for example. Any of those blog posts, we want to see how they're doing over time. So we could see here the one, uh, how cold should a cold plunge be? That is driving the most of the traffic uh, from the June blog posts that we wrote. This is super important to see because if something starts going down, like if this top article here 
starts going down and starts getting less fewer clicks or fewer impressions and we can see that here like it automatically will highlight green or it'll highlight uh, like a reddish color if it's going down. I want to be able to see that stuff at a quick glance. So click through right here is actually going down. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's not a good thing either. Um, but as long as the clicks and impressions are up, that's all I really care about. Like those are the two metrics that we we're talking about, URL clicks and impressions. And then the click through rate, you know, doesn't really matter all that much as long as we're getting more clicks to the website. And then average position here, we just put that there for the client. Uh, we don't really need to, you know, see the average position because there's so many keywords that each of these blog posts are ranking for that, yeah, sure, it's great that this one has a 4.8 average position, but like, just because this one has an average of 30, uh, an average position of 30, doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing because they're ranking for a whole bunch of different keywords and that's just the average. So we don't really look at that. We look at clicks and impressions. Uh, and then we have this for literally every single month here. And then if you're doing page updates as well, you can say like, cool, we updated this page uh, and now it's getting a ton of clicks. We updated that in November. And you could always see up here, the date range is the previous month that you're in. So I'm filming this in January 24, and this is showing me December, 2023. So this is gonna opt update automatically when you do this report yourself. And this is really interesting here. This will help you with optimization ideas. Uh, so you can basically see uh, anybody who's using the word why related to any of the queries on your site, what, how, and can, you can go through this list and you could say, cool, like I need ideas for a blog post or like I want to further optimize my site. How cold should a cold plunge be? For example, is like the top keyword here. So you could go in and then you could maybe add more information about how cold should a cold plunge be to that blog post or to that page. Again, these are all topics and keywords that you are currently ranking for. You might not rank number one for them, but you are ranking somewhere for them. And it really just is here to give you ideas for uh, optimizing content. So now that we've gone through the report, we can see everything that's here. I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up your own report and it's really easy to do. Yours is gonna look exactly like this and you can switch out the image and all that kind of stuff. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna look at this uh, SEO report template. I have YT, this is for YouTube. This is where you're watching this. Um, so you can see here, I have these two panels open. I don't need those open right now. Uh, and then data, I don't need that open. So I'm just gonna close that. Here's what it looks like here. You have the Hey Tony logo down here. You can remove that. You don't necessarily need that. That's something that we include for our clients. Uh, and you can see that this circle at the bottom here really doesn't look good. But as soon as you go into view, you can see that it's just like a nice curve there. Um, so a little bit behind the scenes. Okay, so this is the SEO report template for YouTube. That's why the YT is there. And then you're going to come over here to make a copy. You're going to click this and then you're going to click make a copy. Now we're just going to select our website from this list. You're going to click create data source. And then you're going to do console. You're going to search this and search console. And then I'm going to blur this out. Hopefully I'm going to choose a site here uh, from the list. And then I'm going to do site impressions and then web and then connect and then add to report. And I'm going to do this as well with the second one here. Uh, we're going to do this console again, search console, do your exact same website. It should only be there once. This time we're going to, instead of site impressions, we're going to go to URL impressions and we're going to click web and we're gonna click connect. And then you're gonna click add to report. Now this might take some time to load, but when it's done, just click copy report. Okay, so now it should say copy of SEO report underscore template YouTube. Uh, what we're gonna do, you could just type in, you know, whatever your business name is, you could do SEO report. I'm just gonna do example business SEO report, and then you can come down here, change your business name if you want. You don't really need this first slide, basically. Uh, the next slide here, Again, you don't necessarily need this. Um, you know, if you are presenting this to a client, sure, you could have this slide here so they could see the work that you did in that month. And then you could change this to like December, for example, uh, and then send this as a PDF because if this slide is changing, it's going to change on the live report. Usually I just send this link up here to the client uh, with a PDF as well so that they have it for their records. All right, so now let's see if this actually pulled the information in. So when we copied everything over, it asked us to connect our Search Console account. This pulled in all the data into the existing report. I'm sure it'll break at some point in this template, in this video. And if it does, I will show you how to fix that. So we can see here, all the data is already pulled in. We can see the top landing pages. We can see the top queries. We can see all the information here. Then we're gonna go to the next slide here. Okay, we can see that it has all the information, but it's only pulling up until October. So what we're gonna do is just click on this graph area here. 
Then we're going to scroll down and then we're going to just choose the date range. So we're going to go from, let's say from December 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2023, or sorry, 2022, 2023. Click apply. And then that will show you all the, the previous months. We don't ever really do the month that we're in because that data is not going to look good. It's not going to be complete. So here we can see everything. And like, if I, for example, if I just go, if I push this to January 23 versus uh, January 24, this graph will be a lot lower because we're only a couple days into the month as the recording of this video, we're on the eighth. So it doesn't look necessarily that good, but that's how you do that. Yeah. If any of this is broken, you're going to have to click on it and just click up here and you're going to go and click on one of these two data sources at the top. This should work. If it, if you're not seeing a number that makes sense, just click on the other data source. Okay. So this one's broken here. Um, so all keywords search are containing the words design. So we can see that this is broken. So what we're going to do is just click on that. You'll get that uh, pop up. You're just going to come here, click on one of these, see if that works. No. And then if it doesn't click on the second one and that should work. Okay. So that's, this is an example of one of the issues that can happen when you're going through, uh, and you're just going to go through all of these. It's a little bit tedious, but once it's set up the first time, you won't have ever have to do this again. Uh, and then you're going to click on this big button down here or this big area, and then you're going to do the same thing there. So we, we should be able to see all the keywords that they have using the word design. Um, now for this client and for you, you're not probably going to have the word design unless you're a design agency or you do some kind of design. So you're going to come here and replace this with something that makes sense for your business. So in this case, I'm going to do sauna. So I'm going to come down here, click, that's going to be the default value. It's going to show me all the keywords that include the word sauna. And then I'm going to come up here and just type in sauna. Typing this in up here doesn't actually do anything, but show that text on the page. So you need to make sure that the query here is sauna, uh, and you can go to setup. Uh, once you've clicked on it, and then you could change the default value there to whatever you want. And then that's going to show you all the keywords there. This is going to show you only information that's relevant to that keyword here. So then we're going to go to the next slide. So this is October blog tracking. Uh, we don't have all the information in here uh, that you had in the full other report, but basically you're going to do the same thing here. You're just going to click on setup data source, and then you're going to choose that. Um, oh, the reason why it's not showing this is probably all correct setup. So the reason why nothing's showing here is because this is set up as a filter. So we need to actually add the content that we want to track on this page. You can only track up to 10 per page, which is super annoying because some clients we have like 30 or 40 blog posts that we write per month. And, uh, so we just end up having multiples of these pages or if we're doing a lot of page updates in a month, uh, you won't be able to see all the information on one slide, which is kind of annoying. So you're going to come down here and you're going to just click the X on this filter. And then we're going to click add a filter, right? So you might not see all of this stuff here, but you're going to click come in down here and click create a filter. And then you're just going to call this, we'll call it like December blog tracking, for example. Um, and you don't have to do anything there. So include, uh, then select a field. We're going to do landing page, select condition, uh, uh contains, and then we're just going to go, I'm going to go to the site right now, and I'm just going to see. Uh, blog. I'm going to choose this one, for example, and then I'm going to go here and then I'm going to add this one here, right? So then you're going to, if you have multiple pages that you're tracking month over month, you're going to come here and click or, and then you're just going to do the same thing for all of these landing page contains, and then you're going to paste in the new value. I'm just going to X exit out of that for now. So now this will show us only the data for that one blog post. So you're going to have to click on all these different data sources here and then add a filter, December blog tracking. So once you've created the filter, it, you're not going to have to redo and add all those links every time. Click X, add filter, December blog tracking. And we're just going to do this for all of these on this page. And any other months that you're doing this for, you're just going to do the exact same process for blog posts that you updated that month, right? So we can see here the blog post is there. We can see that it has 11 clicks, 1800 impressions. We see all this information that's really great and this is what the client wants to see. So the whole reason that we're doing this is so that we can keep track of if our optimizations are going in the right direction or in the wrong direction. If things are going in the wrong direction and you've given it a month or two, 
you're going to want to go back to that piece of content to that page on your website and re-optimize it. And basically you're going to do this on an ongoing basis and you'll always be on top of your SEO. And if it's performing well, or if it's not performing well, or if a competitor comes in and all of a sudden they're just doing a ton of SEO and your stuff starts to drop, you will see that really quickly. And I just want to take a minute to thank my buddy, Matt at Diffuse Digital Marketing. This was actually developed by him originally. We've since edited it and added a bunch of stuff to it but it was, it's his core design. It's his core report. With all that being said, I believe in community over competition. Matt and I both compete. Technically we're competitors because we both do SEO for a bunch of businesses. However, there's more than enough work to go around. By working together, sharing ideas, sharing reports, sharing strategies, it's beneficial to everyone, including our clients and including you. Anyways, that's pretty much it. That's the entire report. Thank you so much for watching. And if you made it to the end of this video, please hit that subscribe button and uh, you know maybe like this video. Bye.